welcome back to the farm boys and girls today i wanted to have a little think about the trees on the farm at this time of year so we're going to go and explore all about them just now come on so the first question is how do trees like these ones behind me survive during this cold winter time that we've got just now so when winter starts to hit we tend to stay maybe indoors more, birds start to migrate, and many animals start hibernating. But trees also have their own way of surviving the winter. And this process is perhaps more complex than you might have imagined. Trees rely on a process called dormancy. And when a tree becomes dormant, it's a little bit like when animals hibernate. During this dormancy, all the processes that trees normally do, including growth, metabolism and such like, all slow down. And because trees don't produce food during the winter, they don't have the energy that it takes to maintain their leaves. And this is why they tend to shed their leaves in the autumn in preparation for the winter coming. Another brilliant thing that trees are able to do is transform starch into sugars and this acts as an almost antifreeze. The second question I was wanting to ask ourselves is if the leaves have already come off the deciduous trees, that's one of the main ways we can tell what species a tree is by looking at its leaves. So during the winter, if we're out and about, how can we tell what kind of trees these are all around us. So different species of trees have different types of bark and that's one of the ways that we can identify trees during the winter is by looking at the bark. So I think we should go now and have a look at some of the different barks that can be found around the farm. Come on. As you can see, the barks from the different trees around the farm could help us to identify the type of tree that it is using a simple chart. You can see their different textures and often different colours too. One of the other ways we can identify trees in the winter is by looking for signs still attached to the tree that gives us clues, such as these. These are the leftover seed from the ash tree called keys. Let's have a look. This type of fungi only really grows on dead elder trees, so that too might help us to identify it. We can also look at the shape and colour and size of the buds on the end of the winter branches, as well as looking for clues like the horseshoes on the horseshoe chestnut. The large tree behind me here, of course as we know, is one of the evergreen trees that do lose their needles at this time of year. So although it's lost its needles, there are still some clues as to how to identify it during the winter time. Let's have a look. We can still see some of its tiny little cones attached to the branches. We can also look at the unique makeup of its branches. We can also look for things like catkins, which are like the seeds that you can see on the hazel trees here. These stay attached to the tree all through the winter. We can also look at branches of trees at the ends. For example, the ash tree just looks like a cow's foot, as you know. We've talked about that before. So the tree behind me right now, boys and girls, is a beech tree. Now, this is a deciduous tree, which should technically, as we've found out, have lost its leaves for winter time. But the beech tree has something in common with little people's teeth because the leaves on the beech tree do not fall off until the new ones are ready to push through. Just the same as your teeth. You don't get your adult teeth until your little baby teeth have fallen out and the big ones are ready to push through. Let's have a look. Aren't the beech leaves a beautiful colour? As we've seen, different trees have different textures of bark. I would love it if you could go now and see what trees you've got in your local area 
and if you could perhaps take some back rubbings off them and let me see them. The third question for today is what about the evergreen trees? How is it that they survive during the winter months? As we know, the evergreen trees don't lose their leaves like the deciduous ones do. And they survive in the winter time without losing their needles. Let's have a think why. Most evergreen trees have needles instead of leaves, as you can see here. Evergreen trees first came mainly from cold climates, so they have already got the features to be able to survive well during the winter time. The shape of the leaves or needles allows the evergreen to conserve water, which is needed for photosynthesis, which we've already talked about during the first lockdown. Because they have more water than their deciduous cousins, their leaves stay green and stay attached longer. The evergreen needles also have a very waxy coat and that also helps to save water during the summer and winter, allowing them to survive perfectly all year round. Whilst on a walk at the farm today, I came across something really cool and I thought I'd better show you. It's a woodpecker hole in one of the big old dead trees on the farm. Brilliant. Bye bye boys and girls. See you again tomorrow.